Tombora Volcanic Eruption of 1815, from Disaster Diaries. The massive Tombora volcano eruption occurred more than 200 years ago which shook the world and humanity. The volcanic mountain, located in Sumbawa, Indonesia began to show signs of eruption from April 5, 1815 as ash started falling out from volcano and ash rain continued to fall in the surrounding areas of Tambora. Five days later, the volcanic mountain erupted. When the volcano erupted in 1815, it climaxed on April 10. Tambora was the volcano with the highest volcanic eruption index of 7. The ash flowing out from the volcanic eruption was estimated to cover three-fourths planet Earth. Darkness swept around the world as the sun was covered by smoke erupting from Mount Tambora. The eruption of Tambora has been remembered as the greatest and the most destructive volcanic eruption in modern history. Volcanoes near the equator can cause global weather changes if their eruptions are powerful enough to release gases into the stratosphere. This gas gets trapped since it is too high to be washed away by rain, then travels along the equator and spreads out toward the poles. This decreases the amount of heat from the sun that passes through the stratosphere. Mount Tambora is an active stratovolcano on Sumbawa Island, Indonesia. Sumbawa is flanked both to the north and south by oceanic crust, and Tambora was formed by the active subduction zones beneath it. This raised Mount Tambora as high as approximate 4,300 meters or 14,000 feet, making it one of the tallest peaks in the Indonesian archipelago, and drained off a large magma chamber inside the mountain. Its massive crater is therefore a caldera. It took centuries to refill the magma chamber, its volcanic activity reaching its peak in April 18, 15. Using radiocarbon dating technique, it has been established that Mount Tambora had erupted three times before the 1815 eruption, but the magnitudes of these eruptions are unknown. Mount Tambora experienced several centuries of inactivity before 1815, known as dormancy, as the result of the gradual cooling of hydrous magma in a closed magma chamber. Inside the chamber at depths between 1.5 and 4.5 kilometers, 5,000 to 15,000 feet, the exolution of a high-pressure magma fluid formed during cooling and crystallization of the magma. In 1812, the caldera began to rumble and generated a dark cloud. On April 5, 1815, a moderate-sized eruption occurred, followed by thunderous detonation sounds. On the morning of April 6, volcanic ash began to fall in East Java with faint detonation sounds lasting until April 10. What was first thought to be sound of firing guns was heard on April 10 and 11 on Sumatra Island, more than 2,600 kilometers or 1,615 miles away. It launched 160 cubic kilometers of ash into the upper atmosphere. More than 43 cubic miles of material was discharged, a recorded world record, massive volumes of gases, dust, and rock particles were blasted into the atmosphere. The lessons of the massive eruption that Tambora laid on, have made people aware that there is a link between volcanic activity and climate change. In 1816, the world was threatened with food shortages because cattle and plants perished. 
At the same time, uncertain temperatures in the northern hemisphere were significantly colder. The weather systems changed completely for three years. With Tongvara's eruption, cooling temperatures led to decreased rainfall, failed crops, and mass starvation in many parts of the world. Farmers suffered from failure of food and vegetable crops, food supply. The masons stopped their work because the cement batter froze. The world remembers the strange weather phenomenon in 1816 with the titles, The Year Without Summer and Volcanic Winter. For Indonesia, disaster was not just the past, but also the present and future life. Before the eruption of 1815, Mount Tambora was a high volcanic mountain or stratovolcano. The powerful eruption had destroyed two-thirds of Mount Tambora, now reaching only 2,851 meters tall as compared to about 4,300 meters originally. Of the 12,000 residents inhabiting Tambora's waste, all were almost completely perished in a single day of its first eruption from volcanic ash and pyroclastic flows. Of these, only 26 survived. Casualties from the islands of Sumbawa and Lombok in Indonesia reached about more than 92,000 people in the post-impact. But it led to millions more deaths later. Cholera already existed before the eruption, but the colder temperatures caused the development of a new strain in the Bay of Bengal. Fewer people had immunity to this new strain of cholera, which then spread throughout the world. In the spring and summer of 1816, countries in the northern hemisphere suffered extreme weather conditions. Average global temperatures decreased about 1 degree Celsius, enough to cause significant problems around the globe. The volcanic eruption column had reached the stratosphere, an altitude of more than 43 kilometers. The coarser ash particles fell one to two weeks after the eruptions, but the finer ash particles stayed in the atmosphere from a few months up to a few years at an altitude of 10 to 30 kilometers. Longitudinal winds spread these fine particles around the globe, creating optical phenomena. Prolonged and brilliantly colored sunsets and twilights were frequently seen in Europe. The glow of the twilight sky typically appeared orange or red near the horizon and purple or pink above. Eighteen fifteen Tambora's explosion created the huge quantities of sulfurous gas which mixed with water in the air producing a cloud of sulfuric acid, ash, and dust that was blown around the world by stratospheric winds. Ice cores taken from Greenland in 1815 and 1816 indicated unusually high levels of sulfur. The heaviest snow fell ever known in the country, in Italy, on December 31st. The snow was red and yellow due to being mixed with the ashes flying across the globe from Mount Tambora's eruption. The phenomenon raised fear and anxiety in society. At that time everyone was not aware of the cause of the European red snow. The paintings of European painters made in the short period after the eruption of Tambora, show a more yellow, redder, or more orange sunset. The color was due to the thick dust content in the atmosphere by then. In 1816, a persistent dry fog was observed in the USA. The fog reddened and dimmed the sunlight, such that sunspots were visible to the naked eye. Neither wind nor rainfall dispersed the fog. It was identified as a stratospheric sulfate aerosol veil.
The mega eruption of Mount Tambora left a 7 km by 6.2 km wide crater containing a two-colored lake with depths reaching 800 meters. The eruption destroyed a small Asian culture, known to archaeologists as the Tamboran Kingdom. All vegetation on the island was destroyed. Uprooted trees, mixed with pumice ash, washed into the sea and formed rafts of up to 5 kilometers across. One pumice raft was found in the Indian Ocean, near Calcutta on October 1 and 3, 1815. Clouds of thick ash still covered the summit on April 23. Explosion ceased on July 15, although smoke emissions were still observed as late as August 23. Flames and rumbling aftershocks were reported in August 18, 19, four years after the event. A moderate-sized tsunami struck the shores of various islands in the Indonesian archipelago. Now, Tambora has slept in a long break after its last eruption in 1967. Based on the history of the eruption of Tambora, the eruption period of the mountain ranges from 3 to 89 years. Indonesia's population has been increasing rapidly since the 1815 eruption. As of 2006, the population of Indonesia has reached 222 million people, of which 130 million are concentrated on Java and Bali Islands. A volcanic eruption as large as the Tambora 1815 eruption, would cause catastrophic devastation with more fatalities. Therefore, volcanic activity in Indonesia is continuously monitored, including that of Mount Tambora. They focus on seismic and tectonic activities by using a seismograph. Thanks for watching friends, and see you in the next video.